going to try one more time and see if uh, if we can get this to work. I'm going to go ahead and just keep going, even though I'm not sure you can see me. Um, <clears throat> this uh, some of the technology has changed in the middle of my using it, and I wasn't that good at it to begin with. But I'm Aubrietta Jones. I am one of the pastors of the First United Methodist Church of Maumel, and I am glad to get to uh, be in prayer with you all tonight and to uh, look at the scriptures with you tonight. Our first scripture that we're going to look at is Luke chapter 11 or Luke chapter 17 verses. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep getting choked up. Uh, Luke chapter uh, 17 verses 11 through 19. And this is the story of the 10 lepers that were healed. And uh, they, uh, it, it's a, it's a story about being sure to say thank you, which is fitting for us tonight because our theme tonight is gratitude. And so it says in this passage, uh, Luke 17, beginning with the 11th verse, it says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. Praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? He has, or has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner. Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. <clears throat> this is a powerful thing for us to, to read tonight because this is a passage where that we remember Jesus's incredible ability to heal and our incredible ability to take things for granted. Uh, we have an ability to ignore uh, our blessings. We have uh, an ability to um, to overlook the great things that have happened for us. Sometimes things happen for us that are amazingly good. And instead of having an attitude of thankfulness and thanksgiving, our attitude can sometimes be one of relief that something we thought should happen finally did happen. And maybe that's what in part happened with the lepers. Um, he did tell them to show themselves to the priest. And so if they were trying to uh, cooperate with that uh, idea, maybe they were disciplined enough that they went to go show themselves to the priest. And this one, the only one that absolutely could not contain his joy was this man who was of a religion kind of related to Judaism, but it was not strictly Judaism. He was a Samaritan, a, a group that had broken off of the Jews earlier on in the the faith history of the jewish people and so a similar religion but not really the same so uh we think about that and we think about um how much that the lord can do for us and how much we can overlook or take for granted or only be mildly happy about as if the great blessings of god don't always sink in um, as i'm talking i do want to take a minute and thank some folks that are joining in tonight I see Sherry and Melissa and Nancy. Glad you're here. There may be a few more down uh, below, but uh, I was going to try to scroll down there a little bit. Um, but uh, I welcome you all. And, and I know some others were watching earlier when I had a little technical difficulty. Um, but we really are blessed beyond measure. And um, there are so many things that happen in our lives that are incredibly um, incredibly fortunate for us. And some of them we know, sometimes things work out for us behind the scenes and it might be years or decades before we even realize how fortunate we really were because uh, there were things that kind of worked out before us and we didn't realize how much more complicated life could be. And then there are times that I think maybe we'll go to heaven when we die. And when we do, we're going to find out a lot of ways that God has mightily blessed us. Um, but um, just like this leper uh, who really thought his life was at a dead end, 
um, Jesus healed him and he moved on and he went uh, went about his way as a healed man. He got to run and come back and thank Jesus. And then he got to go about his way as a healed man. And uh, there are so many times that we think we're at a dead end in life and God gives us a new direction and we have to give thanks for that. And really there are small new beginnings around us all the time and we don't always notice them and we don't always uh, we don't always appreciate them and recognize them. In Psalm 69, verse 30, it says, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hooves. The poor will see and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts live. And and that passage, that scripture, uh, if we're not used to the sacrificial system, it's funny to say that God... Um, that would please more than that would please God more than a bull or more than an ox or something like that. Um, but what it means is our gratitude and our praises to God are even sweeter to God than uh, great offerings, uh, than um, mighty acts that we do. Um, not that those things aren't important, but God loves to hear us praise him. God loves to hear us and see us notice him. He loves to see us notice him when uh, he has done something really, really special for us. And so that is that is something we can do. And really, I think right now in the midst of our COVID crisis, it's particularly important for us to give thanks and to notice the great blessings of God because God is blessing us. And sometimes we don't feel very blessed in the middle of this. Sometimes we feel a little um, short tempered. We feel a little frustrated with our situation, but God is mightily blessing us. He is mightily blessing us. And it is a huge joy uh, to get to see that and to recognize it. And so I'm going to bring up some things tonight for us to think about, to thank God for that we don't normally thank God for, or that we might not take time to thank God for. I hope we're all thanking God for family and for friends and for income and for a place to live and things to eat. There are other things that we can thank God for. We can thank God for the stage in life that we are living in right now. All of us are living in different stages, different times of life, but we can thank God for the stage of life that we're living in right now, for the fact that we have learned the things we've learned thus far and for the blessings that lie in front of us. Uh, we can thank God for that. Um, we can thank God for things about our personalities, our own personalities or the personalities of people that we love that are maybe unusual or endearing or helpful in some way. Uh, probably we haven't been challenged to do that very many times. Uh, this is interesting. Online, I came across a list of things to, to be thankful for. And one of them was be thankful for people who give good entertainment suggestions. Who would have thought? It never would have occurred to me, uh, to be honest, to specifically thank God for that as a topic and to thank God. I might thank God for those people for other things they do, but I don't normally stop and say, oh, God, thank you that my friend told me about this movie or that kind of thing. And probably should. Um, uh, along a similar line, we need to thank God for people who post funny and uplifting things on the internet in tough times. Um, we can thank God for painful lessons that are behind us. All of us have gone through things in life that maybe we wish we hadn't gone through that have taught us valuable things. And we can thank God for all of the life lessons that are behind us and the things that we have already achieved. I think that's a really, uh, really powerful thing to do, a good thing to do. We can thank God for laughter. Uh, we can thank God for our memories. I've got another one here. Who has been patient with you recently? Who has shown you patience and grace? Someone in your life has done that. Uh, whether somebody was uh, uh, patient about a meal that was not very well cooked whether somebody maybe didn't comment if you were two or three minutes late to a Zoom meeting, uh, someone has been patient with you. Um, and finally, one more thing that I want to mention on these lists of things that I looked at today. Um, uh, we can thank God for 
um, the uh, we can thank God for the things in our lives that are a treat to us in the midst of this time, things that we look forward to. Maybe it's working out in the yard. Maybe it is uh, taking a hot bath. Maybe it is driving around in your car. Uh, there's a lot of things that help to lower our stress these days, and we can thank God for those things. Um, and first and foremost, apart from any list you might stumble across on the internet, we need to thank God for the gift of Jesus, for the blessing that he is, for the new life that we find in him, for the goodness of his love and his grace. Uh, we can thank God that Jesus sees us and knows us right here and now, that he cares about us, that he cares about our situation, that he has lived through hardships as we live through, maybe not exactly the same thing, but frustration, isolation, loneliness. Jesus knew all those things, and uh, Jesus uh, lived through those and, and uh, was uh, with us um, in the midst of all the things we go through, and we know he understands. I'm seeing some things people are thankful for. Sherry Taylor says, Danny has been patient with me during this isolation. He has not killed me yet. Uh, Dan's a pretty patient guy, and you're a lovely person, Sherry, so I'm not surprised by that, but uh, all of us, I think, get tough to live with once in a while. We get forgetful or we uh, get clumsy or we spill things and this kind of thing. Um, oh, Rosemary Stewart, that's so sweet. She says, I thank God for you. That's really nice, Rosemary. Appreciate that. And she says that I'm a blessing to bring the devotional. Thank you, Rosemary. I thank God for you, too. Uh, we've got so many great people in our church family and in the community of, of Maumel and in the state of Arkansas, there's a lot of people I know, people from my hometown, uh, and uh, I'm thankful for all those different relationships. And uh, Rosemary, I'm thankful for you and and for your uh, uh, your teaching, your leadership of our children in Sunday school. It's very special. One of our Sunday school class teachers there. So there's lots of things we can thank God for, and uh, I'm I'm thankful to get to uh, live in a country that, you know, we find it strange that we that we uh, don't get to go to worship right now, but there are Christians all around the world that can't go to worship because of uh, oppression, because that their religion is hated in their country. And we're really blessed beyond measure that we can talk about these things openly on Facebook. We can talk about them with friends and, and uh, that it's okay to, to be open about our faith. And that's a huge blessing. So there's a lot of great things that uh, God does for us all the time. And I'm thankful for my pets. I see Melissa Pruitt says, I'm thankful for George. He brings such joy to our home. And uh, George is a great big dog. Now, what kind of dog is he, Melissa? I can't remember. He is absolutely adorable. And uh, I'm new to the pet owning world uh, as of a year or so. So I, I'm thankful for, for Wicket too and uh, my kids. And um, I'm thankful that the the stages in life I have gone through thus far, I, I'm thankful for each one of them, and I'm thankful that I don't have to do them again. <laughs> you know, I'm thankful that I don't have to learn how to drive a car again. I'm thankful that I don't have to uh, learn how to um, learn how to get through a college lecture again. Yes, Melissa has a golden doodle. That's what George is. He is adorable. And lots of people are getting puppies in the midst of this COVID thing. I really enjoyed seeing everybody's pets online. That's one thing I've been thankful for. Um, and uh, I'm thankful that, um, that, you know, I've got a house to live in, that even in this time when uh, healthcare system is, is uh, stretched thin, that if I had to, I could go to a doctor and I could get in if I had an illness of some kind. Um, I'm thankful for that. Um, there's a lot to be thankful for. You can be thankful for your favorite color. Uh, maybe some people on online with us tonight have a favorite color that they are thankful for. Um, most of my life, my favorite color has been green. And then sometimes I also really like like a salmon color. Um, uh, thankful for those things. I'm thankful that I, um, I'm thankful that I've gotten to do uh, some home improvement projects in this time of of uh, being home a little bit more than I needed to get done. There's a lot to be thankful for. And what I want to ask you to do is I want to ask you to um, put your prayers in your hands, all of your gratitude, put your gratitude in your hands and we're going to go to God. 
God, we thank you and we praise you for your love and for your faithfulness. We thank you and praise you for the chance to give thanks to you. Because when we thank you, when we get to say thank you, God, we know that you are alive in our praises, that you that you are with us in a special way, that you rejoice with us because we see the world as you see it for a moment. We recognize the blessings that you give us. And when we do that, it fills your heart with joy and it fills us with joy because we're not taking anything for granted. We thank you, God, today for the beauty of the world we live in, for the wind, for the rain, for the greenery. We thank you, God, for all those things. We thank you, God, for our homes. We thank you that we have a place to shelter when the weather gets harsh and when it's cool outside or when it's hot outside, we have a place to go and we thank you for that. We thank you, God, for friends and family that we can connect with through Facebook and through telephone and, and through Zoom meetings. And we're thankful for that, God. We're thankful for our churches. We're thankful, God, that you have brought us into communities of believers. And even though we aren't together right now, we're thankful, God, that you allow us to treasure the fellowship that we have and to continue to share it remotely right now. Um, we're thankful, God, for the quirks and the oddities of the human being, uh, all, the, all the different things that people do that are funny and endearing and the, the things that we forget that make us laugh when we realize what we've done, the little mistakes we make that really turn out to not be such a big deal. And um, thank you, God, for humor and for joy. Thank you, God, for um, for the uh, cycles of life that we go through. Thank you, God, for childhood and all the excitement and the joy and the inquisitiveness that it brings and the raw energy and the opportunity to have had a few experiences where we left before we looked. <laughs> we thank you, God, for the memories of those times. We thank you, God, for... Uh, the teen years and getting into that stage of life and the memories that we built then as we tested some boundaries and we did new things and uh, we learned a little bit more about who we were as people. We thank you, God, for young adulthood as we moved out into the world. And and uh, we thank you, God, for um, the, the privileges and the liberties that we got to enjoy for the first time as young adults sometimes, the exciting things that we got to do and the places we got to go and the sense of being able to direct our destinies. We thank you, God, for the maturing years of life as we continue to go on and lessons that are learned and uh, things that ways that we become more confident and more at home in our skin and and ways that we get to see others that are younger than us blossom and grow and change. And we thank you, God, for the wisdom that comes as the years continue. And uh, thank you, God, for intergenerational friendships and for the richness that different life experiences bring. Thank you for our pets. Uh, thank you for their joy and thank you for their uh, uncalculating spirits um, that, that witness to us about simplicity. Thank you, God, for, um, for um, all of the blessings that you give us that we don't normally notice. We praise you and we ask that you would help us to have eyes to see at all times. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so as we were talking, my dog was getting just a little bit out of hand, and that's okay. Uh, Sip says, I'm thankful to God for the sunshine and tired of the rain. I am thankful for the sunshine, too, and it might rain again one of these days soon, but I'm thankful for the sunshine, and I'm thankful for the green, and uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful season, and um, I'm thankful for the possibility that you know, in a few more weeks, we will be back together again. I hope we want to do that in a way that is responsible and reasonable and will protect everybody. Uh, but uh, I, I would look forward to that very much. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. And I want to challenge you to post something you're thankful for on your Facebook pages tonight. Post something you're thankful for. Hi, Karina. Um, and uh, it's it's good to get to see all of you. Good to, good to get to uh, praise God with you and pray to God with you tonight. Um, but uh, post something on your Facebook page that you're thankful for and uh, challenge others to do the same. Um, and uh, Karina's saying, I miss you. I miss you too. I have really enjoyed getting to know so many families that have come to the church, the Gouchers and the Smiths and the Pruitts and um, everybody that's commenting tonight and 
and several more that I have trouble. I, I couldn't name them all because there's so many great people um, and uh, people that you get to joke around with and people that you uh, uh, get to have serious, deep conversations with and uh, people that are always sunny and people that are always looking for ways to improve the world around them. There's so many great personalities. Um, I love to say, I, 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 I don't quite have the quote right, I don't think, but C.S. Lewis, in one of his books, he talked about how monotonously boring are the ways of evil and how glorious and unique are all of God's saints. All the different people that love God and that want to please him and are trying to live good lives for him each and every day. There's so many different personalities and so many different talents and so many different quirks and um, to, to be negative, to be, uh, to be, uh, uh, to be a negative force in the world. Really, there's not that many ways to do that, you know, but there's so many ways to show kindness, so many ways to show love, so many ways to show grace and joy. And I'm thankful for all of you. And I'm thankful for, uh, all that is ahead because I believe we're going to get together again. One of these days soon, uh, things will change and we'll get to be together again. But I'm going to savor every moment of every day, and I hope you will, too, in the midst of all of life's ups and downs. Thank you for being with me tonight, and, and uh, God bless, and uh, hope, uh, hope you have a great evening. Take care.